But as far as the city's concerned, um, you know, we've known Brexit's coming. Um, we're not sure the exact manifestation of it. Um, so by and large, the city is prepared for any outcome, whether it's a no deal or, or a deal. Um, and that's at multiple levels. So businesses individually have prepared for Brexit um, by ensuring that they have got continuity of operations um, in, in either regime. Secondly, uh, the regulators um, have ensured that we've got continuity um, of liquidity and structure um, through deploying temporary measures both in the UK uh, and in the EU. And we saw the latest announcement of that yesterday with the ECB with regard to derivatives. Observations from the business so far, from the q and a from the floor. One point I'd like to raise about um, the law there is... Can we start now? It, it, I mean, obviously, China is, is, is a, um, a large marketplace. It can use its own capital. But increasingly, it is looking to partner and bring international capital in. And that's the, where the role of Hong Kong and the UK in accessing those pools of liquidity, whether it's through sovereign wealth funds, through large pension assets in Canada or, or elsewhere. And what they look for is a degree of independent rigour. I mean, if you're putting a couple of billion pounds into a project, you're not going to entirely rely on the, the project owner to say, well, you know, here's, here's what it's going to happen, you know, here's the, sort of the, the forecast, etc. Um, you're going to reply, rely on you know, the financial community more broadly to do both the rigour around the, the construction risk, um, around the long-term viability of those projects, and that is where you know, I hope that both um, our professional services can play a part. 